Hey everyone, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist. Got my four Sunnyside records right here, and there's a new one on the way. Got my two Mel Bay books, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary, and Into the Labyrinth, An Anatomy of Position Playing for Jazz Guitar. And uh, as you can probably hear, losing my voice a little bit. We're uh, in the semester. It's early February. Um, don't know when you'll see this video, but that's what time it is right now. Just came off kind of a, uh, a difficult week. We had some uh, wild weather down here in the DFW. Excuse me. <clears throat> I guess I would edit that out, but that's too complicated. Anyway, um, the streets were very icy, and I was uh, on my way up to New York to play a gig at Smalls and do some photography for the new Sunnyside album, which is coming out June 9th. It's called Way Back. And uh, man, there was some slip and slide trying to get to the airport, but luckily I made it because I always enjoy uh, coming back to New York where I lived for about six years. And if you want to check out that Smalls gig, it's uh, on the Smalls Live uh, YouTube channel played some of the tunes from the upcoming record and some from these other CDs here with Colin Stranahan, Matt Closey, and Glenn Zaleski. So yeah, like I said, we're in the semester here at UNT, and I was thinking about talking about something a little different today. I usually take a song and explore, uh, you know, ideas about improvisation, since this is advanced improvisational techniques. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about uh, warming up these days, especially as the semester gets going, and I have uh, the guitar in my hands all day long, teaching lessons, teaching my improv class, possibly then doing a gig in the night, flying up to New York, etc., and trying to maintain sort of physical hand <laughs> health. Um, and I have a confession to make, I never used to warm up at all until recently. Um, in my career, I used to kind of feel like whatever the first tune was on the gig or the lesson or whatever it was of the day, that that was the warm-up. And yeah, at some point in the last couple of years, I just found that, I think it's because, you know, teaching students that are on such a high level, and they would come in, you know, first thing in the morning, wanting to play stuff that was really difficult or really fast or both. <laughs> And I found that I, I needed a little something just to get the blood throwing, throwing, flowing through my fingers. And uh, what I remembered was uh, when I was an undergrad here, and I took a classical guitar master class with Paul LeBlanc. Shout out to Paul LeBlanc. And he had us all the you know jazz guys with classical guitars. <laughs> the first five minutes of the class, we would just go this little finger pattern of... up to here, I go up a fret, and then I go down. And what I try to do these days is, I try to go nice and slowly, slow, and I also, I try not to stretch my fingers much, but I also, I want this thing to be as legato as possible. I should do it with a metronome, but you know, for the purpose of the video, I will not. And I find that these days, I want to move like my whole hand rather than stretch because what ends up happening a lot of the time is there's a tendency to want to go to the next note a little bit early on the guitar. And this is something that uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel showed me back when I was in the Monk Institute. I was really fortunate to have a couple private lessons with him. And he uh, correctly identified that for me what was holding me back technically and still does to this day was you know what is very natural on the guitar which is to be play sort of in a staccato way because you know if you play a note and take your finger off it goes away right it's the natural state of the guitar if you're not playing open string I think is to be things to be very short and he he showed me an exercise that I don't do as much the, as I used to, um, an intervallic exercise where he told me not to switch to the next note until I could see the flashing light of the metronome to prevent me from uh, 
moving or switching early. And like I said, I don't do that exercise exactly now, but I always think about, like especially if I'm right here on this, this note, and the next note is right there, and you know, I guess I could stretch my hand, and sometimes I do, you know, but when I'm first thing in the morning, I try to think about, okay, I'm gonna s switch quickly, but not early, to get to that note so that it's legato. So I kind of think of my warm-up as an opportunity to practice technique in the sense that the warm-up is going to be something very slow that gets the blood flowing. And I think when you practice things technically, it's kind of good to practice them slowly as well, at least at first. So I go all the way up to here, and I have this little ritual. When I get to that note, I go... <laughs> For some reason, I play a little F-sharp minor 11 chord. And I try to, you know, pluck it with these four, you know, with my pick and the four fingers and get a nice tone. And then that's the first part of the warm-up. And hopefully then I got a little blood throwing th flowing through my fingers. And then I go down here and I do this little arpeggio thing that again I saw in some video of uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel. I just go up a two octave major seven. So if I'm feeling particularly uh, frisky, I might speed it up a little bit. And again, the, the goal is to just get as legato of a sound as possible, which is largely achieved by not cutting anything off, which, which seems like it obvious, but you know, on the guitar, not cutting things off is fraught. And I usually go up and then I go back down. And then uh, another thing that I, I do in my warm-up that is also related to technique are some, uh, some other arpeggio exercises. Because, uh, you know, I came up in the 90s, as I've said on many of these videos, and I felt like the, you know, the apex of technical shredding jazz guitar uh, in the 90s was still kind of like Martino and George Benson and you know, I think there's some things that Matheny did to a lesser extent. But, uh, and for me growing up in New Orleans, it was, it was Steve Masikowski. And a lot of my technical practice was geared around, you know, playing very close intervals fast <laughs> and trying to get that kind of shreddy, shreddy sound um, out of half steps and whole steps and chromaticism. And when it came time to play uh, wider intervals, I just didn't really have a, uh, a system or any way of approaching it. And so I think what I would start to do as it became the 2000s and the sound of jazz guitar uh, changed, and I felt like wider intervals were kind of important. I mean, they were always important, but you know, in my mind, and my own, this is my own journey, I would just kind of go for it, like, okay, well, I can, I know this one thing that I can do technically, and so I should probably, I mean, I knew that I should probably start over and try to figure out how to do the other thing, but I just didn't, I felt like at the time I didn't have the time, although I had more time then than I do now, but that's, you know, the folly of youth, right? So here's one thing that I, that I do now that I try to uh, incorporate into my plane, so, and I do in my warm-up, I do this, like, two octave minor arpeggio. And over here I'm just alternate picking it. And why this particular fingering? I don't know y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember how this came to me. I'm sure there's other ways to figure it. This is what I do. It's hard to alternate pick when you get down to these lower strings, especially when you're descending. Then again, if I'm feeling froggy, I might speed it up a little bit. Make sure everything, I've got everything there. And so on and so forth. So that in the heat of battle, when I'm playing, I have access to that to break up the half steps and whole steps and things that I uh, 
that I always play. Um, although, you know, a lot of time has passed, so I probably have incorporated a lot of different things. <laughs> I think I originally started doing that because I was playing in the Hot Club of New Orleans and I sort of identified that, you know, in Django Reinhardt's playing you get a lot of those kind of big arpeggios. Um, and so I wanted to incorporate some of that into my soloing so I could sort of hint at that I'd listen to some Django. And uh, so anyway, 20 years later I'm starting to warm up and try to figure out technically how to do it. And uh, you know, you could obviously alter that, you could play major. Arpeggios, you can do any kind of arpeggios and be more systematic about it. I just find I don't have that much warm-up time usually, so that's what I do. And then, very recently, I started incorporating this other thing. Um, I'll just show you. I, I've been going. Just this little three-note cell. doing that because I was playing the tune uh, Infinize and I on those sus chords you know, I was hearing something like that um, something intervallic and something that could sound a little different on those sus chords and uh, I think I accidentally played something like that on a solo and uh, got lucky got away with it and I was like oh that's cool I'll do that uh, every time and then I quickly realized that technically I had gotten lucky the first time and I didn't really know what I was doing. So, you know, I think that's where I'm at now. I try to incorporate into my warm up if there's something technical that I'm trying to work on because in the warm up it'll be slow. So I, I do that all the way up here. And again, this is pretty similar to that exercise Kurt Rosenberg will show me all those years ago in some ways, and that the trick is to not, if I'm on that finger, and this is the next one, the tendency is going to be to cut this one off to get to that one. So I try to switch quickly, and especially here, to, the next note would be this finger here, right? So. Cell has a lot of applications. I, I was playing my song uh, Swing Set at Smalls, and I realized, like on a G major 7 sharp 11, if I play that little idea off the third, so starting on B, see, that's why I gotta practice it. You get a cool collection of notes, right? B, E, F sharp. That's a cool little cell. if I want to break up my usual, you know. You know, it's pretty different than my usual thing. And I'm still trying to incorporate it into my plane in a more natural way. You don't want it to sound like, okay, you're doing your, your thing, your normal language, and then here's a thing that's obviously a lick. But anyway, so, y'all, I do this uh, every morning before of the day of sitting in this chair, you know, before the onslaught of lessons and uh, classes and things that I have to do. And I try, even if I don't have a, uh, any students before, if I'm on a gig, I try to get there a little early and at least do the first part of it, just to get the blood flowing through my fingers. And you know what? I feel like it has made a difference just in my uh, 
hand health, um, I feel a little less pain <laughs> and tension in my hands. I've never had any major injuries, but you know, especially like if I do a lot of solo gigs, I start to feel it. And uh, so anyway, just wanted to make a video. It's such a big part of my, my playing routine these days, or it's a regular part. So I wanted to talk about it, and I'm sure there's a lot of other philosophies about warm-ups and practicing technique, but for me, that's where, that's where I'm at right now. So I hope uh, that's been some uh, help to you all, or at least been interesting. All right, take care.